Hello, class. This is Mr. Lehman. I want to talk to you today about how we can use the ideal gas law equation uh, to solve for additional things. Uh, so right now, we've been using the ideal gas law equation, which is PV is equal to NRT, to solve for one of these four variables. So as long as we know three out of four things, we can solve for the fourth. So we've got P for pressure, V for volume, uh, N for number of moles of gas, and T for temperature. Now remember, pressure has to be uh, either in ATMs or KPAs. And then our R value gas law constant will uh, either be 0 0.0821 if we're looking at pressure in ATMs, or we'll use 8.314 uh, for R if our pressure is in KPA. Uh, so remember, volume has to be in liters and uh, temperature has to be in Kelvin. All right, so we want to try to substitute in to this equation algebraically so that way we can solve for things like molar mass of the gas or density of the gas. So here we go. So part A here, solving for the molar mass of an unknown gas. So here's our base equation, right, the ideal gas law. And we learned before that N, number of moles, is equal to little m. Now little m is the mass, and capital M is the molar mass of that gas. So we learned back in the previous units that mass, how many grams you have of a substance divided by the molar mass is equal to the number of moles. So if little n is equivalent to mass divided by molar mass, where we see number of moles in our equation, we can pull n out and plug in mass over molar mass and replace them because they're equal to each other, right? n is equal to mass over molar mass. So take out this n and replace it with m over m. Right? And that gives us a new equation here. And because we're going to use this equation typically to solve for molar mass, algebraically, we can rearrange this and get capital M molar mass by itself. And so algebraically, we can switch that around and we get this equation here. So the molar mass of a gas is equal to little m, the mass, how many grams of the gas we have, times R times temperature divided by pressure times volume. All right, so we're going to do an example problem here. We're going to do an example in our, in our notes. If you're not one of my students, you're watching this, we're going to work through this problem here. Uh, so we're going to use that new equation. So the molar mass of a gas is equal to the mass times R times T divided by PV. And what I like to do, I tell my students, I like to have uh, a list on the left-hand side. If I know what formula I'm using, then I put all the variables down the left-hand side, and as I'm reading the question, I'll just label what I know and what I don't know. Uh, so it says I got 17 grams of a mystery gas. So I'm trying to figure out what the molar mass is of my mystery gas to help me try to identify it. So 17 grams, that is how many grams, how, what's the mass? So if I had a scale sitting in front of me, you know, how many grams the scale is reading with my sample on it, that's, that's little m, that's mass. All right, so 17 grams of a mystery gas are added to a balloon. Uh, the balloon is at 290 Kelvin, so that's my temperature. Uh, because it's in Kelvin, I keep it as is. I need to have the temperature in Kelvin. If it was in Celsius, I would add 273 to it to make it Kelvin. Uh, my pressure is standard pressure. Pressure is 1 atm, 1 of Earth's atmospheres. So that's basically pressure at sea level on a normal day. And the volume of the balloon, which can be tricky to measure, but if you have the volume of your gas, plug that in, 14.45 liters. Now, volume has to be in liters. So if you were like in milliliters or kiloliters, you'd have to convert into liters. And then R value, if you're using ATMs of pressure, then your R value for ATMs of pressure is 0 .0821. All right, make sure you put a zero in there. All right, so we're solving for capital M. We're solving for molar mass. So here we're plugging all these numbers into this equation. I'm going to leave off units and leave off some zeros here just so I can fit it on my screen better. All right, so plug in all of our numbers. Now, I don't have parentheses in my formula, but yeah, get a, get a total for the top, get a total for your numerator, and get a total for your bottom, your denominator, and then divide the two. And when you do that, you should get a molar mass of right around 28.01 grams per mole. And so if you look at your periodic table, like which gas has a molar mass, it's very common, right around 28. And the answer is 
nitrogen, right? Nitrogen is diatomic. Nitrogen is N2. It's 14.01 times 2. That's 28.02. So chances are gas, if it's pure, it would be nitrogen. So that is how we can use this new equation, how we can find the molar mass of a gas if we know all these other things. Uh, something else we can do with our ideal gas law equation is, you know, if you look at the new equation, we have molar mass is here, little m is mass, volume is on the bottom. So look, we got within this equation, we have mass divided by volume. Well, what is mass divided by volume? That's the density. So we can pull out m over v and plug in what it's equivalent to, right? M over V is equal to D. So you can pull out M over V and plug in D in its replacement. And with the substitution, we now have molar mass of a gas is equal to the density of the gas times R times temperature divided by pressure. And then we can rearrange this algebraically to get density by itself. And so if we want to solve for density, we got a new equation. So we have density of a gas is equal to the molar mass times the pressure divided by the gas constant times Kelvin temperature. And then there's a saying to help you remember this formula up here. Uh, so sometimes, you know, if your teacher's making you memorize the formulas, it can be hard to remember everything. And here's a saying to remember this formula. The molar mass kitty cat, all good cat put dirt over their pee. So DRT, dirt over pee. Uh, so the molar mass kitty cat puts the dirt over its pee. All right, so this is just me going through the work in class of how we can substitute in for density. I just walk you through that. So I'm going to show you another example, example number two, if you're in my class, one of my students. We're going to work through this problem. Uh, so we got a new equation. Density is equal to MP over RT. And so over here, I'll make my list on the left-hand side. An oxygen tank cylinder is filled with oxygen gas until it reaches a pressure of 22 atm. Uh, because I'm using atm to pressure, I can use 0 0.0821 for my R value, gas law constant. Uh, Kelvin temperature is given to us, 300 K. Remember, you got to use Kelvin, so if you have Celsius, you got to add 273 to it. And uh, look, we don't know two things here. Now, this is capital M. Let me make that look more clear. So we, we're missing two things, but because we know it's oxygen, right, oxygen is O2, right, that would be 16 times 2. That's 32 grams per mole. That's the molar mass for oxygen. So I do know the molar mass. I do know capital M. So I can solve for density. So I plug those numbers into my equation, and I get the density of a gas, the density of the oxygen gas in that metal tank under pressure. Is uh, 32 the molar mass times 22 the pressure, atms of pressure 0 0.0821 times Kelvin temperature 300. And remember, do what's up top first, do what's on the bottom second, divide the totals at the top by the bottom, and uh, we get a density of right around 28.6. Now units will be molar mass, the mass is in grams, and uh, volume in these problems are always in liters. So the density would be 28.6 grams per liter. All right, so that's how you can use that new density equation. Now, the thing is, don't overthink some of these problems. Right? Density is also equal to mass over volume. So if you know the mass of your gas and you know the volume of the gas, then just use this equation. Right? Only use this equation like if you don't know the volume right? or you don't know the mass, you can use this one. Uh, and then part C. So what happens if you're at STP? If you're at STP, you can take a shortcut. And so when you're at ST con STP conditions, remember one mole of any gas at STP will take up a volume of 22.4 liters. And then one other thing we know is one mole of gas at STP, if you have one mole of a gas, then how much is it going to weigh? It's going to weigh the molar mass. So if you have one mole of a gas at STP, you know two things. You know the volume, 22.4 liters, and you know the mass, the molar mass from the periodic table. So if you want to find the density of oxygen gas at STP, the key is we're at STP. So assume that you have one mole, and so the mass will be the molar mass. If you have one mole of oxygen, 16 times 2, right, O2, and oxygen is diatomic, Oxygen, one mole will weigh 32 grams. And if you have one mole of oxygen gas, it's going to 
pick up a volume of 23.4 liters. And so here our density uh, is right around 1.43 grams per liter. All right, there you go. I hope you all have a great day.